So the next exercise I will ask us to, to, to look at doing this morning together. Now, this is about reflecting on what you can celebrate. So it might seem rather strange during a pandemic to talk about recognition. It probably feels that there's not very much to celebrate at the moment. However, every single one of us on this, on this webinar this morning has had to overcome challenge that they could never have imagined a year ago. We might have felt anxious, we might have felt scared, and we might have felt lost. And we may in fact still be feeling like this. However, we are still here. And we are doing something with positive intent to try and move ourselves forward. Something we'll talk about a little bit later on. You got on with what you needed to do. You did the best job you could do. You showed up and you stuck at it. And it's really worth reminding ourselves, particularly as we are facing more and more continual challenges, just taking a moment to look back and reflect at how far you have come, even if you were in a position that you would never have welcomed or never have expected. So I'm going to invite you to do a sort of a micro version of this challenge now. I'm going to ask you to think of one challenge that you've had to face since the start of the pandemic. In this activity, when you do it alone, I'll ask you to think of three, but just for the purposes of the webinar this morning, think of one challenge that you had to face that you overcame in the last six months. And my guidance on that is, even if you didn't complete that challenge to the, to the complete 100% of your original goal, did you move yourself forwards? Is there an element of you were successful within that, even if you only achieved 60, 70, 75%? Of what you set out to do. And Joe, you've got a story of, of how that meant how that's worked for you in terms of celebrating something which didn't quite hit your goal. Do you want to share that? Yeah, sure. So um when when the uh when the pandemic um started and particularly when lockdown happened, um the innovation beehive, as many organizations, um we we lost a lot of work quite quickly. Uh, and also we were very, very concerned about um you know future business and generating future business. So um, I started looking at potential options for, for other, other, so that was my challenge. My challenge was how, how can I uh, keep the business going? How can we keep the business going? So um, what I did was I, I looked for other ways of, of finding opportunities. And the place I looked was the public sector. Uh, so public sector procurement, which is um, anybody works in public sector procurement or works with public sector procurement. It's a very different um, different, different way of operating from, from what you'd be used to if you're more interested in building relationships in organizations as I've done in the past and as I did when I was a charity fundraiser before I worked in the Innovation Beehive. Um, so I booked myself on some training um, in order to sort of build up the skill I needed um, to fill in the forms and understand what they were really looking for. Um, and I, I knew this, this training was important and it was delivered virtually. And, you know, sometimes you can, it's easy to, get distracted when you're on a half day training session or you feel it's going to be easy to get distracted. So I really worked on focusing and making sure that I was going to be sort of fully present, completely cleared out my diary, got everything I needed to do done beforehand so that I could fully focus on the training. Um, and it was really valuable. I felt it was valuable at the time. Um, and then afterwards I found some opportunities to go for. And uh, well, one of them, we got through to the final, final round. Um, and, and as Mark said, you know, even if you don't actually get all the way and, and, and complete the thing that you, you're celebrating, you can still celebrate because to me, getting through to the final round and being unsuccessful in that particular procurement process was a real win because it showed me that actually I had successfully absorbed what I needed to absorb from the training to be able to write a successful bid. So ultimately, you know, it's very competitive and somebody else wrote a slightly better bid than us, um, but I was delighted that, I, that we were good enough to be at the table. So that was a real win for me. Um, and yeah. I've celebrated every day. Yeah. Yeah. So that you didn't achieve your goal, but you acknowledged actually how far you'd come. You acknowledged the input that you had taken the time to put into this by going into the training. You acknowledged that you applied those skills and moved us to a better place of learning. And I'm sure at some point, you know, we will be successful. I mean, we've just been appointed today to, for some work with the, the NHS. Um, so, you know, uh, it is not always about achieving the goal you thought you were going to achieve. So, um, you know, 
once you've thought of the one thing you want to recognize and you're most proud of over the last few months, then reflect on what you did to successfully achieve this. Don't focus on what you could have done better. Look for the good. You know, as Joe said, he put the time aside. He invested his own energy into it. He wrote a bid that got us to the final stages and moved us so much more forward to understanding how to win work in the public sector. So some great things that Joe would have put there in step two. Mark, there's, there's an image that I think it would be useful to, to share for people here about particularly coming back to that point about, um, you know, celebrating success even if you don't make it or you know celebrating as you go as well so uh, you, know, you know I go hiking a lot and um, I'm, I much prefer hiking up a hill rather than along a canal or through woodland and there's something wonderful about hiking up a hill um, where at any moment you can look back and you can see the progress that you've made because as you go up you get constantly even even if you've been walking for two minutes you can look back and there's a view you know, as you go above the tree line, there's a view and then you go a bit higher and there's more of a view and more and more and more. And the higher you go until you get to the summit, you can you can turn around at any moment and you can see the reward for the work you've done as you climb up that hill. Um, and it's 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 I think it's a wonderful image for this particular micro habit, because this isn't just something that you do at the end. This is something you can do at any moment during a project, during a challenge, during your day you know you yeah can... we often have a conversation at the end of the day where we say you know what what will he celebrate today what's gone well for us today even when you know even in the depths of the last of the last lockdown where there was no business coming in what have we done today we had a webinar and we had 30 people on it fantastic so when you've written down what you did to successfully achieve even if it was 70 percent of your original goal <clears throat> just write down how it felt, again, tap into the emotion, which we talked about in practice one. What did it feel to you? And then we all have that inner voice. We all have that inner dialogue. So how did you contain it or overcome it? Was there something that you did to say, get thee behind me, I'm not listening to you now. Think of the emotion and what you can do to celebrate the fact that you didn't stop, that you did move forward and that you weren't derailed by that inner voice. Now, when you practice this after today, I'm gonna to ask you then just to pause, go away, have a cup of tea, and then come back to the list and celebrate and think about how proud are you of what you've achieved? Did you ever think that you'd be in this situation a year ago? Did you ever think you would have to think or act the way you are now? But you've identified in this activity, and you will do one here, but you'll do two more to say, actually, I've learned something new about myself. I'm experiencing growth and development. It is painful growth probably, but growth nonetheless. And it's worth noting your growth, celebrating your growth. And over the next six weeks, I'd say at least every four weeks, just take some time to reflect back perhaps at the end of the month, but just at the beginning of November now, at the end of November, reflect back and say, what three things can I be really proud of that I took on that I achieve to some extent, and that I can then tap into the emotion and understand how I quieted those, those uh, voices inside my head that said, this is too hard, I can't do it, I haven't got the skills, or I'm not able to, to achieve this. It'd be lovely if we, in the chat, if anyone could share, perhaps one of the things that they put down in terms of a challenge, something they would like to celebrate, or something they're most proud of. So we're going to ask you to use your fingers, use your digits here um, and uh, chat in the chat function. I've just written hello in there, so you should be able to see it. Would anyone like to share something they want to celebrate over the last six months that they can feel they can feel proud of? The way Joe talked about how proud he was that we got to the final round of the RFP for the public sector. Well, whilst people are doing that, what, what are you most proud of over the last few months? Oh, you know, it, it's, it's interesting. I've taken quite a lot of time to think about that because I, I've definitely had the inner voice right at the beginning of lockdown. I remember talking to my coach and saying, how did I not anticipate this? Why isn't this, you know, this something here must be my fault. I had all these amazing plans and strategies and then it's all, it's all falling apart. 
around me. Um, I think just in terms of the, in terms of personally, what I'm most proud of, because it can be personal as well as professional, um, I've really started thinking about how I move and making sure that because um, I'm somebody who was used to traveling a lot, uh, running from meeting to meeting. I went to the United States of America probably at least once a month before lockdown. So used to being out and about and awareness that my movement has gone down. So um, I just do a few minutes of stretching every single morning and a few minutes of stretching every single night, no matter how I'm feeling, no matter what is going on, just to make sure that I'm really, really giving myself the best possible setup for the day and stretching out all of the stress at the end of the day. And you know me, that isn't the sort of thing that I would have done before lockdown. I'm most proud because I've kept at it. Now, some days I haven't. Some days I may have had a couple of brandies on a Saturday night and decided it's best not to try and stand on my head. However, I am quite proud of the fact that I've, I've kept going at that. And then in terms of personally, uh, professionally, so, you know, at the beginning of lockdown, we wrote a, a lockdown strategy as we started to emerge from lockdown into the summer, we created a new strategy and explained to the team, we've pivoted in terms of what we thought our goals were, we've pivoted in terms of our financial targets, we're looking at our products and services. So hopefully, and I've got some of the team on this this morning, having a clear direction to help people that's based on where we are in a very truthful manner. That's great. Thanks, Mark. And we've had a couple of interesting responses come through. Um, someone has said um, that she's simply proud of getting through it and having some structure with kids, home learning and keeping sane. I think, you know, that point about managing the home learning and potentially a job and your life. Um, yeah, I, I can totally see that. I imagine that feels like walking up a very steep hill. Um, and I also undertook, OK, um, forgive my pronunciation on this. Kwai Kong, Ki Kong, um, which I've just Googled on my iPad, which is sitting next to me, which is a bit like Tai Chi, but probably that's a terrible thing to say, Michelle. <laughs> uh, there you go, it's like Tai Chi, good, good, okay. Um, and then uh, another comment, transitioning my team from 100% office work to 100% homework and continuing to provide the same level of support to our students. Some would say even better support as it's more accessible. Oh. There you go, that's a great thing to celebrate, to, to actually find the... I did a post on our um, on our HR leaders WhatsApp group yesterday where I talked about um, you can only see a rainbow when you're standing in the rain, and uh, I think you know when you can see that actually things are even better as a result of this crisis. There's, there's brilliant to see those those silver linings and those those, those moments of rainbow. Um, proud of submitting several innovative UK applications and for attracting private investors. That's brilliant. That's fantastic success there, um, and uh, you know I'm sure you can celebrate that um as well as sort of bask in the success so that's good um yeah great so thank you everyone thanks for sharing your thoughts on that there's some really good ones and um you know that's something to uh to, to keep on doing on a on a regular basis build that into a micro habit